You race for Richard, and then there's a swap. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You go to Bud Moore. Dad goes to Richard. Back yeah. to Richard. Yeah. How did that happen? I'm still trying to figure that one out. Oh, right? really? Yeah, yeah no. Uh, that's kind of when it, the relationship That's when the relationship out. got yeah, bad. Yeah. You oh. know, see, I, uh, when we would come through the neighborhood there, like Charlotte, Wilkesboro weekend, you know, Dale was, you know, especially when we ran really good with Richard, well, you know, how did, how y'all run it? How, you, how come the cars run us so much better? I said, well, we got Kirk Shelbertine is sort of, he's come on board and he's taken a, you know, he's learned a lot. Mm -hmm. Richard's got this guy, he's got that guy. And I'm, we're best friends. I'm just shooting, you know, spilling my guts, you know. And, uh, you know, they got this other guy's coming, and the year is out. He's, he's got such and such coming as, like, lead fabricator. And then, uh, so we're running well. This was, uh, this was at, at the end of 83, because we had right. won some races. We won uh, on Riverside and uh, Martinsville. Yeah. So then we're staying at, still stayed at your dad's place there. And so we're talking, and I'm sort of spilling my guts, you know. And then 83 is over, and all of a sudden find out that Dale's going to come drive for Richard. And, uh and that kind of hurt, you know. Yeah. Uh, it, that's what kind of bothered me. And, uh, but you know, hindsight, looking back, take all the emotions out of it. Uh, I mean, I can I can see why Richard did what he did. It was just, you know, back then two card teams really didn't exist. Uh, but it sort of, you know, it didn't sit well because uh, it was it was almost like a family saying, "Hey, we're done with you, kid. You're done. You know, you're yeah. out out the door." Yeah. And that's when it turned bitter. And I, it wasn't until probably six months before your dad died that we actually kind of. No kid. Buried the buried the axe, you know. Whatever. Unreal. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. I knew that y'all had I knew I didn't know that there was any kind of animosity over the swap. Yeah. Until I did a little research yeah. here yeah. for the show. Yeah. But I know you were coming around, y'all were friends, and then it just it ended abruptly. Yeah. Quit. Yeah. And then y'all almost became you know, you had a couple run ins on the racetrack over yeah. the years, yeah. but it just it was there was no friendship at all. No, it was opposite of that, probably. Yeah, sure. Yeah, but yeah. Why, both, both sides. Why Dale Earnhardt, and not Richard Childress, being the one that you would be more upset with? Uh, well, I was, di I was disappointed with Richard and pissed off that Senior was. I'm sitting there spilling my guts about what we got planned, right. as if I'm, you know, part of the team. Yeah. And all of a sudden, he ends up with it. You know. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you, know, you think he? So he used that information against you. Well, yeah. but you know, Richard and Dale were best friends. They hunted together. I mean, you know, they spent a lot of time in the woods, and you know, you know, it's things I couldn't control. But you know, disappointment—it was beyond disappointment. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, that, anyway, so I learned. I learned a lesson. Though. Yeah. And and in our generation, though, after that, I kind of hate it though. But never got close to any drivers the whole time. Kind of isolated myself. Mm. Uh, and, it, and it stuck with me a long time. And I came from a background of go-kart racing where you were, everybody was best buds. Yeah. But when you went out on a racetrack, you know, you try to beat each other. Uh, but then race was over, you're best friends again. So I never really developed that. You know, I mean, it kind of, that was always in the back of my mind. Yeah, you, um, so let's talk about that. You, um, 1988, North Wilkesboro, um, what was it, 1988, there was a dust up with Dad. Yeah, well, in North Wilkesboro. Yeah, eighty nine is the one that everybody I remembers. Confused, yeah. But eighty eight. Yeah, yeah. What happened in eighty eight? I don't remember that one. Uh, I'm trying to remember. There's one came before the other one. Let me yeah. see. Uh, the eighty nine is when Jeff Bryan won the race, and you and Dad ended okay. up right. back backwards. Right. The, the one before lap. that, the eighty eight race. That uh, I remember that one well. What the happened? one before that was. Uh, What's this show rated? Can I? Can I? Say it's whatever, whatever you want to say. Uh, uh, <laughs> 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 All right. Well. The race was going on. I was at uh, North Wilkesboro in 88. Uh, I'm pretty sure I was in the green car, the Quaker State yeah. car. Mer McReynolds was crew chief. Uh -huh. Bob Riley. I mean, it was a, that was a great little team there. Uh, but so we're racing at Wilkesboro. And Senior was, you know, he had to deal. Uh, he, I, I sort of accused him if he, if he knew who was going to be really strong that day, he'd, work, he'd take that guy out early if he could. Really? So he didn't have to deal with him. Yeah. So we're running along, and I'm doing pretty good. And we had a, the car's doing great. And, uh, and I come up on Dale. I can't remember who, who came up on who, but anyway. Dale, he just basically spun me. You know, I mean, put his bumper on me, spun me, turned me around. I didn't hit the fence. I almost did. Went up, hit, got gathered back up. Well, then I'm working like crazy the whole rest of the race. This is halfway through the race. So I'm working the whole race to catch back up to him. So about still 100 laps to go, I catch him. We get up beside each other. And so I, I, I repaid a favor. And it, he didn't hit anything, spun him around. And then uh, the race is over. Come on, the cars, come on down the garage, pull into the garage area. And Bill France, uh, 
Jr. was waiting at my door in my car when I get out of the race car. Really? Yeah, he's sitting there standing at my the door. President of NASCAR. Yeah, pre- the, the big daddy. Yeah, he's standing there. <laughs> he's right there. And, you know, him and I, I mean, like we had daily conversations. I, yeah, I probably right. had three in my whole For life sure. with him. Yeah. yeah. So he's standing at my car when I go to get out. And he, and he looks at me and says, uh, he says, uh, what was, uh, what, what was that uh, altercation about out there with the, with the three car? What was that all about? And I said, well, you, you saw it. He just took me out. He just spun me out. Oh, no, and I'm, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about later in the race, you came out and hit him. He says, uh, he said, was, uh, what do you say about that? I said, I'm, I'm really disappointed in myself. <laughs> and he, he looked at me like, like, like really puzzled. He said, You're, he said uh, yeah, I said, I'm really disappointed. He looked at me like, that's what I want to hear. Well, and then I came back and said, well, I'm disappointed I didn't run that son of a bitch through the wall. <laughs> <laughs> you said that? I said that to him. And uh, he kind of like looked at me, kind of smirked, walked away. The next morning, that was before email. That was uh-huh. fax machines. <laughs> On my fax machine, $10,000. Just fine. like that. Conduct detrimental to the sport of auto racing. Unreal. That was it. So, so, so anyway, that, I mean, that's, that's just so a that funny little table. story. Yeah. That's, no, but that's. I, I laugh table. at it now. I don't think it's, yeah. I mean, it's funny as hell now, but it wasn't funny then. And in 1989, uh, I was there for this one. Boy, this one hurt. Yeah. Um, you and Dad go down into turn one. And honestly, I'm going a, I'm to a, call it the way I saw it. Yeah. It looked like. You you and him went for the same space. And he did, that was pretty much what I, a lot of people say. He came down on me. Yeah. I went up on basically. About a combination I couldn't have of got both. any. I couldn't have gotten any lower. You yeah. know, I used to have a little flat. You could actually use that flat to help get the car to rotate. Yeah. So I waited to the the reason I waited to that last lap because I knew he was going to come back and try to wreck me. Yeah. So I didn't want to put myself. I wanted to do it in a way, and I already made my mind up. I wasn't planning on passing him. I was going to run square to his door. And I was going to run square down the back straight. I was going to run square in three and four. You didn't want him to get behind you at I all. didn't want him behind me. So I was going to get down. And, and then and then, I had more car than he did at that time. Right. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't going to be a question as long as he was on my outside. So that's why I took the bottom. Yeah. And I wasn't planning on, like, doing a nice clear pass. You had to think a step beyond that. Right. So, I, you know, I didn't thought it through and figured it all out. What I didn't figure out is that he didn't want to give that space up, you yeah. know, and how he got his car to come down as low as he did. And I couldn't go any lower. We hit, you know, we got together. We hit yeah. and spun. Yeah, I mean, I was more mad that y'all let Jeff win <laughs> yeah. than anything. You know, the, the whole end of that thing. <laughs> I, it was one of those deals that, yeah, he wasn't even a factor. You know, it was yeah. It, but our two cars. So your dad never really saw me all day because I had a flat tire I had overcome. Something happened, so I was never even in the picture. But I, the whole time, you know, McReynolds is our crew chief. He said, you know, just sit tight, just don't do anything stupid. We got the best car. We got the best car. So anyway, I when when I caught your dad at near the end of the race. Uh, uh, he, you know, he, he wasn't expecting it, you know, he wasn't, he, cause he, he was the dominant car all yeah. day. And, uh, and I can't, I think it shocked him that all of a sudden in the last 10 laps, he's going to, he's going to lose this race. He knew yeah. it. Oh yeah. Uh, hey, what point of the year was this race and what were the ramifications on the line that I, I think that dad, made this thing ratcheted up? Dad and Rusty were in the middle of the points battle and Rusty and dad, you know, had had a, I don't know if Rockingham came later, but Rusty and dad got together at Rockingham, ended up ripping the back of dad's car off and. Just think, dad was so used to winning championships, and here he was in the thick of a battle with somebody that he felt like that he could beat, and he lost. You know, he lost the title to Rusty that year. And when you lose a title, you look back at days and moments in the year when you think, well, there went 12 points, there went 24 points. And, you know, so that the Wilkesboro deal was tough. Part of me wishes – I mean, I didn't, you know, you went down in the corner. You didn't go straight up into the side of daddy, but daddy came down a little bit. Um, you know, in my mind, I'm like, ah, you know, if we just could have ran second that day, even though second would have sucked, we wouldn't have went to victory lane. But damn, that was a lot of points we lost that day, yeah. and then a couple other events during it, throughout the year. But um, so all right, after that, there was pretty interesting stuff happening <laughs> in the garage area with with conversations and dad. It was nearly a ride. I never come that close to seeing. Were you there? That you were. Th- were you there? That day? I was you're there. Th- it was scary. Yeah. I mean, the fans were on the fence. I mean, they were trying to. You know, what little bit of security they had, it was going at you. Uh, Just, well, half of them were yelling against me, and half of them were yelling for me. I mean, yeah, it was oh. like it was like a mixed crowd. It was a close thing to a riot. Uh, and I know that day, McReynolds, myself, I don't know if your dad did or not. We got out of the infield, we were parked in the infield, we went to leave. I laid in the bottom of Larry McReynolds' van with a blanket over me. Really? And I understand your dad might have done the same thing. Wow. But, I mean, yeah. it was it got it got nasty. Yeah. So after you know, so you and Dad had that that was probably the height of y'all's frustrations with each other or were there others that's pretty much it i think yeah. it kind of i think it was uh co- you know i look at it cost me a race which is 
which at that time was as important to me as his championship was. And I looked at him, so he could have given a little bit. I, I, you know, I really, you know, of course, I'm seeing it my way. Sure. You know, uh, but, I mean, I couldn't have gone to the bottom of the track anymore. And he had been – it wasn't like we were close. Those cars were on the radial tires at that time. And Goodyear hadn't figured that out exactly uh, on how to get those tires not to be treacherous getting in the corner. Yeah. It was a, it was a tricky time. Yeah. And Wexbar turn one was, was not a – we both went in there. I didn't have to go in there hot. Uh, I mean, I had it – I got my car turned. And if it had been – Two car lengths later, I'd have had to turn. I wouldn't have, my car wouldn't have spun. But anyway, it is what it is, you know. Yeah, you talked. You said uh, a moment ago that you and Dad worked things out. Yeah, how'd that happen? I can't remember exactly. We ended up leaving a racetrack at the same time together. Uh, and as far as when it, when we kind of buried everything, it would have been uh, whenever the last race at Rockingham was. I don't know what year that was. Mm-hmm. Some of these stat guys could probably tell us. But we're leaving the racetrack and we're in street cars because we don't have far to drive, so we're leaving the racetrack. And, and we're kind of back and forth in the traffic flow. And all of a sudden, so, you know, somebody's trying to crowd their way in. It was, and, and then you let them go. And then, you know, still trying to get out of the infield. So we get out of the infield. Uh, and then senior pulls, it was junior, uh, senior beside me. So he pulls up, rolls the window down. Hey, what are you doing? I said, we're going to head it home. What are you doing? He said, uh, we're going to go get a bike to eat. You want to join us? We're going to go to PF Chains in Charlotte uh, on the way home. You want to stop and go have a dinner with us? Yeah, sure. Let's do that. So we mm-hmm. did. As a matter of fact, in that conversation, I had a, piece of property i was getting ready to build uh build a shop on and uh, your dad said well at the dinner we're sitting there just shooting catching up he says uh if you need any help he says, i got a bulldozer i got a guy bulldozer and operator i'll send over there if you need somebody to move some trees and stuff for you so i mean that's kind of how thoughtful he was once you got you know that's if you want on the bad side you know but i mean so you had that whole ride home i mean you were leaving rockingham so yeah. you're going to go drive an hour or so to charlotte yeah, yeah, and uh yeah. were you thinking what in the world just happened? Because <laughs> you guys have been harboring this ill will for a decade. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it was time, you know, and uh, it was good. We had a good, a real good dinner. You know, it was just, you know, it's kind of like, I mean, it almost reminds you of a family squabbles. You know, you get squabbling with your brother or sisters, and if you're not careful, you let that go on way too long, you know, and then, you you know, eventually you get older, you start cleaning stuff up a little bit. So mm. it was uh, kind of more of that type of a, a situation, I'd say. 